Hello there, Flip here, and today I wanted to talk about something I feel is getting extremely overlooked with Genshin shifting meta landscape and how the Abyss has been ramping in difficulty. A lot of creators when asked about building certain characters and team comps usually first go with the build whoever you want, Genshin is such an easy game, and then they tell you to get multiple characters to build multiple different team archetypes and so on and so on. And I've come to want to shed more light on something called vertical investment, talking about the strengths of both and ultimately what would be the best course for your account if you're struggling to clear or are just starting off. But before we do that, as always, if at any point during the video you're entertained or informed, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing, as I talk on various topics regarding Genshin Meta and I'll try to keep you updated. First, I'll need to lay out the two main investment types, and hopefully you know your directions because we have horizontal investment, which is what a lot of creators recommend where you just keep moving on and pulling and building new characters, and then you have vertical investment which is what I will try to sell you on today, to an extent, which is when you take a handful of teams and characters and build them up from there, with higher artifact investment, signature weapons, and even constellations sometimes. Very quick and important warning, no, I am not saying to whale, do not do that unless you have the facilities to, and even then you could probably make better financial decisions with your whaling money like you giving it to me, but I digress. You don't have to be a whale to vertically invest. First, there is resin and resource investment independent of primogems. <laughs> a lot of people like to clown Zyx because he farmed Vermilion, but honestly, with the fact that Strongbox exists now and minor spoiler for Fontaine, skip to here if you don't want leaks, we are getting a lot more strong boxes, including an emblem one, so dumping all your resin into one place, especially if that's for a hyper carry, is not a bad idea at all. No one can take away your artifact investment, that will always be a permanent upgrade to that character. Each beneficial substat is like a 2% damage increase on a character, so if across all 5 artifact pieces you were to get 2 more good substats on each of them, you are looking at an almost signature weapon increase just off of artifacts alone, while also being able to strong box sets like Noblesse and VV for your supports. And then you also have your other guaranteed increases like crowns and getting your characters up to level 90, which is very important for reaction heavy characters. And then yes, there is obviously using primary gems to get weapons and constellations. A 5 star weapon for most on field carries is usually going to be a 20% increase over 4 star options, while also being able to give some quality of life if it's a signature weapon for that character in particular. And for weapons that increase overall team damage, we have things like key and elegy which can give great bonuses to your entire team. And for a lot of characters like Hu Tao, Yola, and Kazaha, Raid, and Yai, Nahida, etc, they have very good early early constellations that also aren't unreasonably unattainable factoring reruns later on. Oh yeah, and lastly, other characters that are stable supports to others are also considered vertical investment in a way, like getting Shenha for your Ayaka or Yolan to improve your Hu Tao team. Vertical investment can be a very lengthy endeavor, but the payoff is honestly worth it, which I'll cover more in a bit, so hold on for that. To talk about horizontal investment in a bit more detail now, as I said, it's the main way a lot of people play Genshin. For free to plays, you can get a 5 star almost every other patch, usually, and it's just about collecting a lot of characters you like, getting them to a usable enough standard, focusing only on a few core units, and being able to expand from there. You have a lot of elements and characters to work with, probably struggling with the amount of fabs you need, and you most likely aren't getting that many characters all the way to level 90 or even using most of your crowns, as that takes away from the other characters you could be building. People who horizontally invest only usually pull generally good weapons like Miss Blur, Jade, Aqua, etc, weapons that just work well on any character they can use. And now that I've covered both of these types of investment, let's look at the strengths of both of them. Since I'm already talking about horizontal investment, I may as well continue, and I think the biggest strength of it is being able to easily adjust your teams for specific abyss cycles. The only place where investment really matters, there are a lot of elemental checks, especially this current abyss lineup, and when bosses like the Rune Drake come around, there are even weapon checks, and for some people the abyss may just generally not be possible unless you have specific characters in multiple avenues built. Also some characters are significantly worse than others to specific types of content and being able to run suited ones to where they shine is a massive positive. And yes, having access to a ton of teams and characters is pretty fun, it probably means you'll be less likely to get bored. Unlike vertical investment where you'll mostly be running the same characters and teams over and over, you do additionally get to imagine you have a ton of waifus and husbandos that want you when you have no one in real life. And now to talk about vertical investment and its strengths again, look at this abyss lineup. Even though the second half of this abyss is mostly an elemental check, the first half requires a lot of strategy and planning if you don't have comfortable enough damage to clear, while having mitigation. Vertical investment and dealing more damage just go hand in hand, so if you can deal more damage then you get a lot more comfortable clear times, and will have to stress less when doing the abyss. I don't know how to say this in a nice way, but a lot of people suck at this game. People don't build enough ER to be able to burst constantly which is the biggest contributor to damage 90% of the time. People also don't know how to do proper rotations where the abyss is too dynamic and mobile for proper rotation to be pulled off. And some just don't have the knowledge to be able to adapt for that. This is probably why the stigma of whales not being able to play the game exists. 
because with vertical investment you can get away with playing worse at more sloppy as you do enough damage to justify it you also get to have less useless characters. I have a ridiculous amount of characters built from when I horizontally invested that were a complete waste of resin and resources for characters that will never benefit me. Why? The fuck would I ever use Jean, Noelle, Yunjin, Mona, Kiching, and so on when I have characters that enable stronger teams for me? You only need 8 characters in the abyss and of course you do switch things around so realistically you're using at most like 12 to 15 characters max. So what is the point of gearing and building more characters that you probably won't run over at your favorites anyways? And with vertical investment, let's say you get bored of Raiden but you got her a really good emblem set and her engulfing lightning, these really strong teams cannot be transferred to your other characters and make your future character stronger. The biggest counter argument of vertical investment is going to be elemental checks, like with the second half of this abyss, but even then you can realistically just brute force your way through most of them if your characters are strong enough. And well, I think that pretty much covers the strengths of both. I do think vertical investment has a lot more strengths and is a better way to kick off your account, but still, there's obviously a reason why people still horizontally invest. Everyone I've debated this topic with does end up concluding that yes, vertical investment is better long term and currently, however, it's hard to ignore the fact that there is obviously a human aspect, and it's not cut and dry as just saying what is better. A lot of people don't care much for the abyss at all really and just want to use all the characters they love which is very reasonable. Raiden, Hyperboom and pulling Nahida would probably be the best thing I could do for my Raiden right now as she isn't that good but I'm never going to do that because I hate Hyperbloom. I am also a Eula main, and I vertically invested into my Eula a bit and I've been able to clear every single Abyss lineup with her, even though it isn't optimal just because I like Eula. I've been playing Genshin since 1.0, I've done both types of investment heavily. Again, look at all the characters I have built just because I wanted to play with them and clear as many characters as I can, and then I kind of just got burnt out of doing that. So I got my Ayaka and I got my Ganyu, and vertically invested the fuck out of them, making them my two strongest teams. Being a premium Aika Freeze team and a Ganyu Melt team with a ridiculously cracked out Ganyu. But then, I also got bored of that because both of those teams aren't that fun to play with, and I also don't like Ganyu or Aika that much. So, the approach I would give to newer players or players who are struggling now is to just pick two characters you see yourself liking for a long time. And again, due to Strongbox, you can afford to farm the signature sets or whatever is best for the character, and Strongbox the rest for general sets. Search up guides and build the best teams for them and maybe pull for their signature if it's a DPS. And then from there, once you're able to clear, since there's nowhere else you really need to go, just do whatever you want and that is again only if you care about the Abyss and you care about fully clearing, otherwise again, do whatever you want, it's your account. All in all, while again looking practically and efficiently, Vertical investment is going to give you more bang for your buck, but having a mix of both is equally if not more effective both for a meta and a joyability aspect, in order for you to not really feel any burnout long term and kill your desire to keep playing. You know what, actually that doesn't sound like that bad of an idea. But yes, I feel like that's all I really have to say on this topic, and on that note, thank you guys so much for watching, if you enjoyed the video make sure to like, subscribe and comment your thoughts on these investment types as I'd love to hear it and I respond to almost every single comment. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys. On the flip side, peace.